Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And uh, we've got something a little bit different here. GLC Gym Leader Challenge. Now this is at AFK in uh, Noon Abbott. Um, yeah, not much more to say. Oh god, that's uh, Phil's face there in the camera. Uh, not much more to say than that. Uh, myself playing the uh, fighting deck. And uh, this is Trevor here playing Metal. Now... This is a best of three. They decided to try it with best of three, which I'm not too unhappy with. Uh, I wasn't too sure going in. I got Mulligan there, but uh, I think it works out quite well. So what kind of fighting deck am I playing? I've got the three Hitmon Bros. Um, I actually have the Ty Rogue as well, the baby one. And then I also have the new Ting Lu uh, with that spread 30 attack and uh, the busted Okadogi as well. The busted Okadogi. Um, double Mulligan. So yeah, pretty cool. First time properly playing in a GLC uh, competition. I noticed that the camera here is a little bit skewed, with, but we've got a few more games as well after this, so keep a look out. There's um, four games recorded in total. We'll see what they're all like and probably upload them. Um, oh, here we go. I can see I've got a tie rogue there to start. Travis is going to take his mulligans. And fist bump. It looks like I'm going first. And Travis opened the Dialga from celebrations no idea what that does and the orth worm as well which i believe three energy attached gains an extra 100 hp so that's pretty cool start things off here gonna attach energy to the okadogi now i really like tyrogue uh, i can see the hit model in hand i really like the tyrogue here in the fighting deck because you can go first as we can see here and you can actually bratty kick for three counters which is fantastic now i didn't know at this point that bratty kick could be done from active uh, and from bench and to the active and to the bench so that was a nice welcome surprise when I discovered that later on <laughs> in the competition and it looks like we got the some kind of bag um, sorry uh, anything pre sword and shield I don't know all the names off the top of my head but I know it is grab two tools when you see the frying pan uh, if I recall correctly it's like minus 20 if you're a metal Pokemon and your Pokemon can't be affected by abilities if I'm correct so actually from now on any Pokemon with the frying pan attached will not be able to be affected by Bratty Kick. Trevor, a uh, relatively new player, did quite well uh, for his first uh, international at EUIC with Charizard. Um, has been playing quite consistently now for, for quite a while. And it's just going to be a frying pan pass by the looks of it. And back over to myself, eyeing up something, thinking about it. It's GLC, but I'm tryharding. Oh, it's a quick ball. Just trying to work out what I want a quick ball. I think I'm thinking about here whether or not um, it's even worth going for the hit one bro combo. Or do I just aggro the Okadogi and the Tinglu? So the thing that one of the big, um, uh, t I'll say talking points, one of the big things about my deck that I really liked uh, is that Okadogi with the stone energy attached. It's called stone energy. So I can grab the deck while I'm here. Yeah, the Okadogi with stone energy and luxurious cape gives Okadogi. Oh, and of course, blend energy. So I've got blend energy, which is like fighting dark fairy. So having that combination gives Okadogi 330 hit points and attacks done to it are reduced by 20. So yeah, it looks like, yeah, I did quick ball for the Hitmon. Guzma and Hala, although this is a non-English version, so that's Bromley and Hala, and it looks like I'm throwing the Hitmon year also into the discard pile. I believe at this point I have retru uh, Rescue Stretcher in hand, so I'm thinking if I do need them, I could just grab... Oh, there's that blend energy. Yeah, so if I need them, I can just go and grab the Hitmon Bro combo out of the discard pile, but I didn't feel like it was too necessary in this matchup at this point. You know, I'm going straight in with the turn two Okadogi. I get the rescue, the, is it rescue sash? I've got the deck in front of me now, I'm just gonna look through. Focus sash, I believe it's called. Yeah, so focus sash has the same ability as that new ace spec, um, survival brace, and it looks like I get lake of acuity as well. Probably not worth shuffling up, Danny, because you are probably just gonna use lake of acuity. Uh, probably gonna get for the Ting Lu anyway, have a little, uh, Shuffle up, and I think I did realize, oh yeah, I'm probably just going to go straight back in. So I've got those three. Blend goes on Okidogi. Okidogi now has 230 hit points, and Okidogi now has 330 hit points. Big tank, and again, has that stone fighting uh, energy. So in order to one-hit knock out this Pokemon, you would need to do 350 damage. 
which even in standard is pretty tough. Uh, if you're not playing Raging Bolt, you're sort of struggling to do that. I know obviously stone stone fighting is not standard eco anymore. Stone fighting is now rotated. What's up, stone fighting? It was um, Vivid Voltage. Just here while we're doing this, uh, if you're not familiar with Gym Leader Challenge, it is a singleton format, so there's only a single version of every card in the deck, in, uh, a card apart from basic energies, and it is more expanded as well, so you've got more sets. I don't know the exact sets it goes back to, but um, there are plasma. There is a plasma card, there is Colrus that, that I've got, and it looks like it's just going to be Luxurious Cape Pass. Um, uh, also worth noting, Okadogi here, his, here is doing one, oh there's the Tinglu. Is doing 170 damage with the good punch, which I'm sure originally translated to Oki Punchy, and uh, I think that was a mistake not to call it Oki Punchy. Oki Punchy is a great name for an attack. But hey ho, apologies for the wobbly camera. You do what you can. Here's a table mounted um, doobery, it sort of like clips onto the side of the table. But I am just going to punch for the 170 on the earthworm. Sorry, it's, I suppose it is Orthworm, isn't it? And Trev using those irritating number dies, uh, dice that you can't see, but I guarantee it's 170. And it's an attached pat. Oh, it's an attached give up. Yeah, there's nothing in his hand. There was Raihan there, but I think uh, even though I got the knockout with uh, on the Dialga, unfortunately no Metal Energy in the discard pile to be able to utilize that Raihan or else would have been able to play the game. So he wasn't able to play the game there. Uh, give me a game two. Like I said at the beginning, it is best of three. We like best of three, of course, uh, where where we can. And and it actually, uh, see, I, I always thought GLC maybe it just works. Just you just play one game because you have one one good game of GLC can take um, upwards of an hour, maybe more. You know, you there's not a lot in the format that's double prizing unless you're playing Luxurious Cape, of course. But I mean, in this case, I've got Luxurious Cape. I could always just um, scoop up net. The Okadogi, if I really wanted to, and just make it even more awkward for for everyone around me. Um, yeah, and another than sort of very specific stuff like the Articuno that can take an extra prize, or the uh, Broken Guzzlord as well that takes an extra prize, and Mulligans all day, baby. Not a lot of Pokemon in the deck. You've got the three Hitmon Bros, then you've got the one Tyrogue, you've got the Okadogi. Um, the Ting Lu, and then finally the Horlucha. The Horlucha that uh, coming into play, two damage counts on two of your opponent's bench. So one damage count on each two of your opponent's bench. Click on the flying entry uh, Horlucha from uh, base set Scarlet Violet. Which I think that's a card. It's a cool idea, but ultimately wasn't that useful on the day. A lot of spread. Is, oh, sorry, I'm talking a lot about my deck. I don't really know much about, about metal. Um, as a deck, I think there's a decent Copperaja that's sort of really tanky, but I don't think we see it. Uh, spoilers. And it's another Mulligan. I see a Bronzor in Trev's hand there. So, happy days. You can play the game. One Mulligan for myself. Uh, so, was, that's technically my second Mulligan. Uh, Trev did Mulligan once. Shuffle up. You see that, that force of habit of sort of cutting my own deck. Gonna see here, gonna try again. We're chatting about summon. I don't I don't actually know what we're chatting about, because I can't really hear it. And another mulligan. Let's try again. I do wonder about mulligans, whether you should like um, maybe play it more like Iono. You know, like you see your hand, maybe you just shuffle your hand and put it to the bottom of the deck. Oh, it's such a minor change. I, it's it, it's a it's one of those things like the minor change to to the TCG. People are always talking about, oh, well, what if you did this? What if you changed that? Is best of three correct? Is should we do best of one? I think um, if you if you want to just be like a successful player, I'm not claiming to be a successful player by the way. I'm not that good. Uh, then I think the best thing you can do is just yeah, there's another mulligan. Play the rules that you're presented. Until the rules change, you know. Um, don't focus too much on how you feel the rules should be, because that's just going to get in the way of you improving as a player. Uh, 
in case you're wondering here, I'm using uh, Game Genic sleeves, which are um, sort of essentially just the the cheaper sleeves. Now, I've used Game Genics for very for as long as I got back into the TCG, so since sort of 2000, they've been okay. But I've recently gotten into using Dragon Shield dual mats. I finally gave in to the Dragon Shield hype, and uh, they are a lot better. I think I got through. I think I broke. About seven or eight sleeves in this competition in four round four rounds of best of three. <laughs> so yeah, definitely um at perfectly fine entry level sleeves, but I think as you start to get a bit more serious in the game, it, it, it definitely does it's interesting how much difference it does make to just have a nice set of sleeves. Uh I have tried the uh what they called katanas, you know, the um ultimate guards. Uh I I I was actually disappointed with the feel. They just they didn't work so well for me. Now my friend Phil swears by Ultimate Guard. That's what he uses, and that's fine. But for me, I, I wasn't that into it. I really like the feel of dual mats. Actually, to be honest with you, have yet to be able to try Pro Procyon Procyon. Um, they're not available in the UK. I don't feel like ordering them in. Feels like a bit of a bit of a bold one. I don't know how many mulligans are on. I think I got to like six or seven. Yeah, we're good. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five cards. So yeah, I did get six mulligans there. We were close to considering the infamous Judge Ball there. So if you're not sure what Judge Ball is, it looks like uh, Trevor's chosen to go second. Uh, yeah, Judge Ball is the judge reveals cards from the top of your deck until you find a base of Pokemon, then you shuffle your deck and draw six. So very reminiscent of, if you can remember, the original text of Quick Ball. And it's Artisan. Now you can see here I am doing the throw your Pokemon to the front, see what's there. I understand this is GLC, it's not that serious. But at the same time, see, I, I wanted to take this as an opportunity not only to just enjoy myself and play GLC, but also to practice uh, better habits, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm sort of doing that as a means of thing. I, I sort of I, I recognize that top players are doing that a lot right now putting the Pokemon to the front, you know, just sort of ordering the deck to see what's there. Um, so I realized that, and uh, it feels like the right thing to do is just copy it. And for some reason, I opt not to get the Tyrogue there. I feel like Tyrogue's a pretty good choice. Or am I missing something? Yeah, let's go for the Okadogi. Maybe I'll get the energy attachment here. Hit him on top in the active spot. Doesn't do a lot. You need to attack with Hitmon Chan first. And then hit him on Lee, and then hit him on top actually does something. So it's a pretty useless card, but I think I've yeah, I've got scoop up net in hand. And that is a capture energy. For those of you who don't remember capture energy, when you attach it to one of your Pokemon, search your deck for a basic and put it on your bench. So it becomes a nest ball when you attach it. Trev now looking through the deck. That bronzor, I believe, is the one that can evolve turn the turn it's placed. I could be wrong. That might be the one that can't be damaged by fire Pokemon, which would make sense to put in the deck. Uh, fire would just tear your uh, ring piece a new one. So yeah, it would make sense to uh, play some fire counter there. Locking, locking out a whole GLC deck from playing is seems pretty good. Okay, what are we getting off this capture energy? It is the Zamazenta. Oh, okay. So I think I think Artisan as well. Yeah, it's just pointing at the Artisan there. So getting a two for one there. Not too sure about the playing Artisan from myself, but I think that's probably the right thing to do in that situation. Let's get some Pokemon on the board that can actually do something. The Stone Fighting Energy is very valuable. Getting that in the Okadogi. It worked so well in the last game. Why not do it again? Uh, this deck also plays the other special fighting energy, which I can look for the deck that I'm holding right now and find it. Can't remember the name of it, because again, it, oh, there it is. Strong energy. So strong energy, uh, this Pokemon does 20 more damage. So Okadogi could be doing 190 with the Oki Punch. Oki Punchy. And it's going to be an Arvin there for Trev. He's going to be getting the TM Evolution. 
luxury ball, uh, luxury ball, level ball, straight into playing level ball. Much better start here. Which I have uh, gets the Belden. Going to be able to accelerate a lot of energy if he gets that Metang into play. Also, the the, the Bronzong um, is able to essentially Dynamotor, but with metal energy. And it's going to be TM, Evolution, Targets, Reveroom, uh, well, Vroom, and Belden. There's the Reveroom, and there's that Metang. And that's over to me. Got the hit on top to move this Pokemon like that. But I believe that's a cape. Luxurious cape. And it's going to be Karina. So Karina is Irida for fighting Pokemon. So going to be searched for, that for a fighting Pokemon and an item. Now, oh, Cape of Toughness. That was it. Cape of Toughness. Toughness. Cape of. Blah, blah, blah. Excuse me. Cape of Toughness plus 50 HP. There's the Professor's Letter from the Karina. So one thing I did notice about this deck, it did like to give me absolutely no energy at all. I think it played like eight, but still just didn't see it. What is that? Is that Horlucha? I'm trying to, I'm, I think I'm doing some maths here. I'm trying to work out some maths. Yeah, so I'm thinking about the 100 HP on the Metang. And I think the Varum, the Reverum might have 100 as well. Maybe 140. So I know if I put one on the Metang, I could triple Ting Lua. I know... Triple Ting Lu, discarding three stadiums, kind of bonkers. But we do have Lusamine, which can get stadiums back. And I'm going to straight away play that Professor's Letter. Oh, okay, that's a blend. Okay, so I, I've i prioritized Okadogi because blend energy in hand. Makes sense. I'm just checking my shuffling there. I thought I was uh, shuffling particularly poorly. I thought there was a Cynthia Caitlin just stuck on the bottom of the deck, but I actually did recover it in one of the last little bunches there. Oh, do we also have a switch cart in hand? So could just choose to save the scoop up net and switch cart instead. And I think that's Silent Lab. Haven't attached for turn. Do I just go aggro dogi? No, I think we're gonna start punching with Tinglu. Makes sense. Switch cart. Oh no, that's not the Pokemon. <laughs> So it's got to put him on top, back to the bottom of the deck, and we're going to discard that Artisan so that Trev cannot use it, and we're doing 30 all over. Luckily, no energy yet on the Zamazenta, which means that uh, it will be damaged through that ability that it's got. It's got any energy attached to it, minus 30. Trev uh, eyeing up. Looks like uh, we've got Orthworm, a Quick Ball as well. And also has the Evo Soda. Oh, we do have a Metal Energy in hand. Quick Ball discard the Metal Energy does activate the Bronzong if you used to get it. Can get it with the Evo Soda. Quick Ball first. Discards Metal Energy, yep. Certainly the correct play. Can get a basic, doesn't have to go on the bench. Difference there from Nest Ball. Something that made things like the Dene GX and Crobat V so broken was the ability to just get it so, so easily. And there's the Dialga. I mean, now to do a coming into play power, you do actually need an Ultra Ball, which discards two cards. So yeah, Dialga does hit the field. And it looks like he's... Oh, yeah. So this is, this is misplay here from Trev. I would have been happy to let him go back. Um, but he decided to play it on, uh, well, I, you know, I respect that, I understand, but he, he didn't fully read Evo Soda, so he, uh, Trev, um, hasn't really played a lot of GLC, so all these, all these cards in the deck, uh, no doubt he's got the list online, which I don't blame him, of course you would, and, um, has had very little to no experience with the deck and a lot of the cards in it are not, um, too familiar for him, so he has just done that. And then he's gone, oh crap, this thing can't retreat now. Why have I done that? Bronzong, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Bronzong ability there. Goes on to the Zamazenta. And then attach for turn by the looks of it. Haven't used Metang yet. I think 
as far as sequencing is concerned, you generally metang first, although it doesn't really make a difference. You can just, you know, your energy goes where your energy goes. And it's going to be Cypher Minutes co breaking. Yeah, I think he's talking about here. He's like misplayed. He, he should have put the energy on the Earthworm to give it loads more HP. Because he can right now, you can just guarantee. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. There we go. He can guarantee two metal on the top for the Metang. Quite a sick little combination. I'm surprised the Algodex aren't playing the um, Cypher Maniac, actually, considering that. But I suppose the support of turn is more important to do other things, like just set up and not completely suck. At least two off of this. There's two. Decides to load up that Zam and the Dialga. So gonna gonna just circumvent the Earthworm, not bother with it. I think I, I quite like the Earthworm actually. Uh, it's not bad, and it's a pass. I do see the Metal Saucer as well in hand there for Trev, so he's gonna be able to utilize that eventually. Back over here now, just checking the discard pile. We can keep swinging with the Tinglu, or we can start to load up and get busy with the Okie Dogie. Basic energy does go on the Okie Dogie. It's ready now to good punch. Eyeing up another card here. It's made contact with the table, but we're not yet. Yeah, it's Silent Lab. So at this point, um, Alex Northey, who is world qualified, I might add, um, is sat next to me, and we actually just check. So Silent Lab turns off all basic Pokemon ability in play. So at the moment that's Okidogi, that's Zamazenta and Earthworm. Now Tinglu um, wants to hit Earth, uh, Zamazenta. Zamazenta does minus 30 damage when it's got an energy attached but I think we all agreed that the damage goes on before the um, stadium is discarded. Nearly forgot the 30 there on the Bronzong. So already Ting Lu really uh, putting a lot of damage on board, getting everything ready to get absolutely creamed. And Trevor's got a lot of work to do here. There is a lot of energy on the board. He's got four basic Mersal and that active um, capture. I think he's going to need to Metang into some energy to move the Bronzong and start punching. And it's a whiff. It's a whiff. I don't know how much metal energy is in the deck, but clearly not enough because it's whiff a Rooney. Also, oh, does actually have Guzma. I mean, if you if you want to start to engage the prize race, you could be Guzma into the Hitmon top, or even Guzma into the Okadogi and start to punch. But does opt instead for the Marnie. Both players shuffle the hand, put them to the bottom of the deck. Trevor gets five, I get four, but it will be five when I draw for turn. So for all's fair, all's fair in love and Marnie. And this camera shake is going to take us on to another, another uh, turn for myself. Did see Phil Blur in hand. So probably going to want to be using that uh, as he starts to punch into the Sokodogi to put his HP back down to a more reasonable level. The trainer's mail is going to allow me to pick up any trainer from the top four cards. Broken card. That is trainer, not item. Nice way of finding the supporter. Eyes up the Versus Seeker there. So... We know that I've got, I believe, Karina. Yeah, so we're gonna re we're gonna use Karina again. Gonna be able to find stuff. Fighting Pokemon and item. Have burnt the switch card. And I believe that escape rope was in that trainer's mail, so there won't be an escape rope here. Because it's back in there. Well, sure, I can find the escape rope actually, thinking about it. What am I talking about? Uh, I can't actually I can't remember if I did if I did that or not. It was a couple of weeks ago now. Right, let's come eyeing up Lusamine. So Lusamine can get two and any combination of supporters and stadiums uh, back into your hand. And looks like I opt for the Chan. My favourite artist there, uh, I always forget his name, there's like to Tomiya Kami or something like that. Tomozaku Kamiya. 
Tom Zuck of Cameo, my favorite uh, Pokemon illustrator. And the Tag Call. So I up Tag Call. Tag Call turned out to be so broken. Like being able to find the Guzman, the Bromley and Haller in this case. Um, eyeing it up for next turn. I'm going to be able to guarantee um, another stadium. I think I maybe have another stadium already in hand. There's the Chan. Ooh, was that double attached return? Did I attach last turn? I think I attached last turn. Oh, that Bronzong's only got 90 HP. That's uh, not so good. And I think this Zamazenta is going to be now knocking out with that Retaliate attack, does 220. Would have to have Luxurious Cape attack attached to be able to survive that, but that would be able to be full blown. It's going to be the Amazing Rare Jirachi. Now, we all agreed that I think the other Jirachi is better. The one that was played in Pika Rom. But uh, hey, Trev's got the Amazing Rare. As an Amazingly Rubbish compared, <laughs> compared to Rescue Stretcher. Trev's probably going to be picking up, picking up the whole line there. Any others? Nope, just those two. Let's get them back in. I'm not even watching. Oh yeah, cool. That's what you're getting, bro. Too busy with my hairy chest out to notice. It's nice to have a proper game now. Game one obviously was a bit of a steamroll, thanks to that broken Okidogi. Um, we're going to be using the Metang. Get some more energy on the board. Another whiff. <laughs> Here's another whiff. All the whiffs. They'll go to the bottom. And Retaliate is going to take Trevor's first prize, leveling it up 5-5. Five five. Two options here, Steamroll with Okidogi, or we set up the triple combo move. And I promote Hitmontop. Maybe there's an escape rope. Maybe it's Guzma actually in hand as well, mining up the bench. Okay, we've got Muscle Band going onto the Hitmonchan, putting its damage up by 20. And I think it is Guzma. Yeah, we're Guzma up the Metang. Just going to guarantee that 50 damage knockout. Seems like a good prize to take. Now, worth noting at this point as well, Hant realized that Hitmonchan does not have to switch. So here I am, switching into Hitmon top, taking another prize card. Or was that the Guzma? I didn't even use the tag call. Cool. Oh no, just what we're talking about, I just played the Guzma. Apparently, I've got Alzheimer's as well. And it's the amazing rare Jirachi. Look at the top two, pick one, put the other one back. Did see the U turn board. <sighs> and it's going to be Ryham played. Uh, it seems like a pretty easy KO for Trev. Um, just hit again with the Zamazenta. But time will tell. And it's going to be the escape rope. I think it's an easy pick. I just give him the Hitmonchan, which is kind of what I wanted to lose anyway, to be fair. I don't think that was a good uh, escape rope there from Trev. I think getting rid of the Hitmon top, and then I have to find a way of getting it for later for the special combo. Pick up the teammates off the top. A broken card for the broken deck. Great pull there. I mean, you'd be full not to play it, right? Yeah, Ordinary Rod first. Let's get some... Some goobers back into the deck. One Chan. Yes, you can. I was just thinking, that. is that how it works? Yeah, yeah you get um, up to two of Pokemon and Energy with the Ordinary Rod. Sort of the Extraordinary Rod, really. Better than It's better than Super Rod. Ordinary Rod. 
choose one or both. Yeah, shuffle two. So ordinary rod confirmed better than super rod. Um, what has the TCG come to? It's pretty crazy. But here comes the the Lee, no doubt. I don't know why I even bothered putting the Chan back in. You're not going to do it again, are you? It's like a one-done situation. And teammates is going to find me any two cards. Of course, it's the Hitmon Lee. I think it'd be smart to get the escape rope here, to be honest. So in this competition, I actually did end up hitting in two, of my, two out of my four rounds against uh, decks that had bench barrier. So I did hit a psychic, which ended in a tie. Although it was a bit, it was, it was a, it was a bit skanky to be honest with you. I probably shouldn't have, should have lost that one. Um, and I hit into a kind of mirror, but um, Simran played Machamp, and of course Machoke has bench barrier for damage and damage counters. So the Silent Lab ended up being really important and play timing of using silent lab uh getting into a situation where you could play silent lab and then hit one lee snipe was what i was kind of looking for quite a few times but it never i don't think it ever actually came up i think i just ended up silent lab ting lu and then there was an opportunity as well for silent lab ting lu hit the mew which has 60 hp and then if i flipped heads on the tyro bratty kick then i would have put uh my opponent into a pretty tough situation but unfortunately i did flip tails on that one so it kind of sucks and we're going to do the Snipe 90 here with the Hitmon Lee because I used Hitmon Chance hit and run last turn. I do 90 damage to one of my opponent's bench and I've chosen Dialga. Dialga goes down. Is that Dialga? Yeah, I think it's Dialga. Yeah, that's the celebration of Dialga. So Dialga goes down. That's three prizes to four now. Uh, it's pretty easy for Trevor once again. He's going to retaliate now. At some point or another, he is going to have to find a way to get ahead in the prize trade to stay in the game otherwise i'm just one ahead um which can be a difficult task in glc and that can be something in the format that does make it quite difficult um if you do just go behind and then you end up trading one to one or you're just you know second to take your first prize then sometimes the games just run away with you um, you never quite have that chance to catch up and i don't know that trev has anything on the board that tells me that he is going to catch up especially with that okadogi eyeing him down with 280 HP doing 170 damage and you can tell I'm a good player but because I did that little wrist the wrist flick there all good players do the wrist flick field blower on the brooklet hill um doesn't opt to field blower the cape of toughness I didn't even catch it at the time but he can cape of tough uh field blower two things not just one so that's unfortunate for Trev. Does need to read his cards. And in case you're thinking, oh, yeah, you should have told him. You, you could have told him. But I rarely pay attention to what's going on. <laughs> All right. When my opponent's playing, um, I have a real bad habit of just switching off. Um, which is why it suits me to play decks that re don't, don't require me to know too much about what my opponent's doing. Like Roaring Moon, for example. You know, I had... A uh, bit of success with Roaring Moon, top 64 at Liverpool. And um, part of that is because it doesn't really matter what your opponent does. As long as I take a knockout, I just don't care. I just just go for it. And it's going to be that Zamazenta to knock out the um, Hitmon Lee. Now, there was a misplay there for myself. I was supposed to bench, re-bench. Um, there was something in hand. There was something like Scoop Up Netted. And I should have played it down again so that I could play it active. But... I didn't do that, I forgot. So here we are, we've got Okadogi active, and I, I'm hitting the Rosa, basic energy, Pokemon, and, ooh, I believe item. I'll have to read it again. I mean, and this was a card I actually played four of in standard for the, 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 the old Desi goons, and I still can't remember what the card bloody does. Let's see, Pokemon, trainer, and basic energy. So I got Tinglu. Escape rope, and there's the basic energy as well. I'm about to hit that special combo with the hit on top. Only happens once in a blue moon. Especially with this deck, it's not really necessarily designed to hit. Oh, it's finishing combo, technically the name is. So finishing combo can combo can only be used after Hitmon Lee used a special combo, and it does 60 to each of your opponent's Pokemon. So this is going to be pretty huge. 
And I, oh, I believe the Magnemite uh, actually has Bench Barrier. So that's pretty good. 60. 30 there because of the Metal Energy. 60 on Earthworm. And 60 on Dialga. So lots of damage now on the board here. 10 HP left for the Jirachi. This is where that Horlucha might come into play. This is where it could get interesting as well. Um, as I was saying just now, so Trevor was behind on the prize tree, but as you can see, I didn't actually take a prize there. So if Trevor's able to now take a prize, he could potentially be get up in the prize trade. And then if I can't come back, well, then we've got a problem, haven't we? But I think, you know, I eyed up that, I got the Ting Lu off of the Rosa. Mallow and Lana there. Now, here's another case of Trev not reading his cards. You'll see what I mean. Mallow and Lana switches. Discard two. And heal. Not that one, mate. <laughs> it's the Pokemon you switched. Yeah, got to read the cards. Got to read the cards. But again, does opt to just play it out. Retaliate is going to get the knockout. This is where the field blower is actually quite important because I was I was banking on using Tinglu and discarding it, uh, the Brooklet Hill in order to spread. But now um, we're in a bit of a pickle because we don't actually have a have a stadium yet. Luxurious Cape goes on Dialga, giving it an extra 100 HP, but it is also now worth two prizes, so jobs are good in. And good versus Seeker, Mallow and Lana back to the hand. Maybe a little bit premature there. And there's the knockout, Retaliate. See, again, I was I had a basic, I should have benched the Ting, <laughs> Ting Lu. So now I'm like, Jesus Christ, I've got to re retreat this thing again, because I just, I just did the same thing wrong twice. Like a fool. What a fool. But it's okay. I believe in the heart of the cards. I believe in the fighting deck. The fighting deck did end up going 2-1-1. Um, I mean, I'm not super disappointed. I did sort of slap it together. I made some changes and slapped it together the night before. Zero testing. Um, I've got to play. I think I've got to play here. Luxurious Cape gives Ting Lu 230 HP now. And uh, that... He said whistle. What's it called? The the blower? Fill blower. The fill blower is used from Trevor, so I'm not worried about fill blower. Can't imagine a lost vacuum coming in, but we are going to see Arvin here. I'm uh, kind of out of switch cards at this point, I think. It's a bit of a problem. Focus Sash and fill blower. Coming out here. I do wonder if the Focus Sash would have been better on the Ting Lu. I think I thought about that after I did the Arvin. So bad sequence in there. Should have Arvind before attaching the tool. Just to make sure there's no other options in deck than in my hand. There's that Horlucha potentially coming into play there. Both Pokemon now on 100 HP. Got to put the Focus Sash on that just to protect myself from... Taking, uh, getting knocked out and choosing now to knock out with that Okidogi Oki Punch. Oki Punchy. Taking another prize. Two for two now. Feeling pretty good about the board state. There's a lot of damage on Trevor's board. Professor's Letter is going to get two metal from the deck. Where are we going with it? That's the question. Oh, just the one. Okay. Trevor deck pretty small at this point. Not a lot of energy left. In fact, there's none by the looks of it, because he only got one. So, I've got to wonder how different this game would be if the three energy was on the Earthworm rather than the Alga. Could have been able to boost up Earthworm's HP and then boost up the Alga's HP with the Luxurious Cape. Would have given him a fighting chance. Fighting pun there.
Looking for help from Jirachi. Not sure if we found it. We found Tag Cool though. I don't know if the supporter has been played yet. It has not been played yet for turn. So he's going to be able to play the supporter. It's going to be that Guzma and Hala. Play Guzma and Hala, I assume. Because we can get that coating metal energy. But I think he's just getting a stadium out. Don't know if he wants that tag effect there. That is something really cool about the tag team. Uh, I didn't, I didn't love the tag team stuff. I didn't really like the tag team GXs, but I did like um, the sort of double supporter effect that you could do. Oh, he is choosing to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he's gonna Guzman Harlo. He gets Mount Cornet. I think is that minus damage to metals or something. There's the coating metal energy, which. Gives metal Pokemon no weakness. Not too good in this matchup, but definitely going to need it once again. That fire matchup and the frying, the, 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 the busted frying pan comes back. Now, unfortunately for Trev, he has, seems to have forgotten that I already searched out the full blow with Arvin. I haven't used it yet. And he's just given me a, a stadium as well to be able to do. Oh, I think Mount. Does Mount Coronet add damage? Or is it Mount Coronet? Something like that. Let's look it up. PKMN cards. Can search MT Mount Coronet during your turn. Play him put two metal energy from disc points to hand. Okay, I was completely wrong, it's not very good at all. And uh, it looks like it looks like his game, yeah. I had everything, and I was just showing that I had everything, and um, yeah, he just scoops it up. So, pretty uneventful finish there. But it is 2 0 for the broken fighting deck. Now, fighting deck fighting did end up winning this competition. That was Simran. With again that uh, mirror but with the Machamp and Lucario as well. So GG's to Trev. Unfortunate there. And that is the game. And just like that, we're done. M Bison. Oh, M Bison's coming out in Street Fighter 6. There you go. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you again next time. Cheers.